publicly available questions that, uh, from folks who've not asked them. I don't actually have a question. I just really want to thank you guys because I think what you're doing is really important. I think I've learned so much since before I moved to New Hampshire and since I moved to New Hampshire from you and from the videos that you post and understand so much more about why you're doing what you're doing. And um, even the Robin Hood thing, I know that you, it's, I think that um, <coughs> I've been able to really see how, I'm um, sorry everybody, I'm gonna swear, how far up it is that they would spend so much money and so many resources to sue you, sue you again, sue you again, try and send a PI up, like to follow you guys around and, and harass you. I've watched the, all, most of the videos that you've talked about today, I've seen. I, I thought you handled it really well with the towing jerk. And um, you know, I know that you said something when you posted it about how you shouldn't have said one of the things you said, but quite I frankly... Him, I called him a fucking loser at the end. And but he was. <laughs> he shot out of the Like, yeah. he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't pause, he got out and aggressed upon you. And you, did, you handled that spectacularly. I've, I have immense respect for you guys, and I just want to thank you. Any comments, or should we go to the next question? Um, probably the next question. Okay. Uh, Dustin? So you're taking actions, and you're getting responses. Can you sit back and quantify, based on all the, the peaceful approaches you've taken to turn it around, to use it, to change the community and work in this project, can you sit back and quantify what's most powerful, what's most effective? And you barely touched on the court process here. In, in my world, looking at you from 3,000 miles away, that's incredibly huge. Um, but is, is the public responses, the write-ups, what is working? What is making a big change? Who wants to jump on that first? Uh, that's one of the things that I love about Robin Hooding. I mean, we've probably gone through, we're, we're approaching having gone through 10,000 Robin Hood cards. So, I mean, you could quite <laughs> 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 conservatively say we, we've saved, you know, let's just guess, 8,000 people from parking tickets. So, I mean, to me, that's a huge quantifiable result. Um, a lot of things, too, happen and then they don't, they don't really make the news. Like uh, one particular case, there is a young um, female. She, the the police had had come to a, a local convenience store, and she was kind of out back, and they were saying like, "Oh, we got reports that kids were drinking out here," and you know, and she was on like I guess probation or something. They they obviously knew who she was, and they're like, "Oh, we need to look in your bag," and I was, and I, I was like, "You don't have to let them look in your bag." And she's like, oh, I'm not going to, you know, she was about to let him do that. So there's all kinds of things that happen where it's rare, too. Like, you may not even see the impact of something. Like, I was at a social gathering uh, one evening on a Saturday night, just like a, a you know, a cook cookout among friends. And there were non free staters there. And at one point, this guy... And, you know, I'm an accountant. He, he was an accountant, so we were really getting, like, getting into it and having a good old time. But um, he, he mentioned, like, oh, something interesting happened to me today. I was downtown, and uh, th these people paid my meter, and they left a card. And I was like, oh, tell me about that. What do you think? I was like, oh, this is awesome. I used to get so many tickets and, you know, in Keene, and this is, like, the best thing ever. And then I was like, I was like oh, yeah, I was out earlier today, and it was probably me. Like I told him that, so it was like a, he's like, oh yeah, you know, you're the man, and it's not often that you get to see the results, and sometimes you, you may, like, like it's interesting, like coming to an event like this, I have a lot of people come up to me, and they're like, you know, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, and like, like this lady here, and you know, it had an impact on their life. It, it, you don't even know the, the amount of impact that you're having, and so it, it's hard to quantify, I guess is my answer. The, the whole thing about court, I mean, it, it was like a great blessing from the state that they sued us. It got us all this press attention. They didn't have a case to begin with. <laughs> I mean, you really couldn't have asked for a, a better situation as far as the state's uh, poor response. Um, 
And I think it, it, may, it shows that they're, they're getting into new ground. Most of us here have faced some level of criminal charges for our activism in the past. And the fact that they're, they, I wouldn't say they stopped using criminal charges against us, but um, the fact that they were trying out this new territory, this civil court, this like friendlier court uh, with us, which I know far less about, which seems far more complicated than criminal court. Um, it's new ground. Fortunately, we had an attorney that stepped up to the plate for us, John Meyer, and he does a whole lot for a lot of good people um, providing free legal services. Um, so in addition to like us up here, there are people behind the scenes that are, that are really uh, helping make things work. I think we still probably would have won the case without him, but perhaps they would have slipped us up in a bunch of the legal stuff that we had no idea how that works. So. I don't know, it's hard to know where stuff lands in terms of quantifying. It's something I'm always asking myself. And one way that I can measure that is YouTube views. You know, that's one avenue that you can at least measure that's it's kept track of. And um, that's a couple of the videos, or a handful probably, from Keen have gotten well over a million views, which is, you know, that's a, that's a huge win any time. Um, Victimless crime spree uh, is approaching 150k, and that's that's a win. You know, people, uh, the the comment sections of these um, videos are especially high, and I think those are ways that we can also quantify the impact that you're having. You know, because it's, it's not just local, it's not just dollars. Like you know, you mentioned uh, one way to quantify Robinhood is that the donations are coming in. You can see dollar signs, um, but with YouTube. I, you know, with all the other avenues, like with LRN, it can be tough. How many people are listening? You know, at any given time, you don't really know. Uh, but, yeah, right. <laughs> you are. Yeah, and I'd like to add really quickly, um, speaking of Derek J's victims, Crime Street, so a lot of the reason I'm in Keene is because of that movie. And there, there are other great uh, folks. Um, like, I met a gentleman in 2011 at Pork Fest, and he... You know, um, we were kind of talking, and, and then I met him again in 2012. Uh, Stephen is his name. H him and Daryl were kind of like, and, and I watched uh, Derek J's Rickless Crime Spree. That was kind of what pushed me over the edge. Like, I just made the move. I mean, I had, like, no plans, and, you know, I was just like, okay. Uh, like, I went to Keene for a week. I applied for a bunch of jobs. I threw everything in my, you know, I, I started driving back. I got three interviews lined up. I threw everything in the car and just moved in, like, two days, so... I probably would not recommend doing that, but <laughs> I still got a lot of stuff at home, and you know. <laughs> By the way, we're over time, but nothing happens in here until eleven. So we're, I'll just keep going. We'll keep going as long as you guys are cool with staying, right? Uh, yeah. As long as y'all have questions, we're, we're going to keep this going. But just to ask, uh, answer your question, Dustin. You know, you mentioned the radio, uh, LRN.FM is what I program. It's a radio network and uh, Derek, Derek and I both have shows on uh, that network. The intention of LRN.FM is to uh, uh, to provide a signal for people that want to run a radio station. That's actually one of the main purposes that I created the, this, the network for. Yes, it's a nice place to go to listen online to liberty-oriented talk, so there's, two, there's dual purpose. There's one to give people good talk radio content to listen to, hopefully both people in the movement who want to hear new shows that they've never heard of before, and people who don't know anything about liberty, which of course the broadcast radio world is a good way to bring people to these ideas who otherwise wouldn't find them. Because if you want to find my show or Derek's show online, you have to seek it. You have to look for libertarian podcasts. So it's easy for us to get the seekers, but to find those who don't know about us and don't know about liberty. That's where broadcast radio, I think, is very, very useful. In Keene, we've had a couple of uh, pirate radio stations, uh, community stations, whatever you'd like to call them. There's one in operation right now, as a matter of fact. It's technically, technically, that's our third station. Uh, the first two lasted about eight or nine months before the FCC came sniffing around, and the operators of those stations decided at, at the first threat they received that they were going to shut down. So eventually, it would be nice to see what happens when, when an operator continues operating. Uh, in uh, you know even under that uh, that FCC threat, uh, but it was interesting when one of the stations sh shut down. Uh, we actually heard. It's interesting who you hear from. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, Fred Parcells. For those of you who have been following the Free Keen blog, this is one of the code enforcers in town. Fred Parcells made a comment recently about how he can't get the signal in Southeast Keene and he wants to listen to Free Talk Live in the morning when he's driving around doing his code enforcing. 
Judge Burke uh, told Mark Edge when one of the stations went off a couple years ago, Judge Burke, who, you know, everybody knows if you've watched the videos in Keene, he's the judge in district court, he was in uh, the YNCA working out, as he tends to do, and Mark was working out the Y at the same time, and you know, Burke knows who Mark is, and Burke made a comment to Mark about missing listening to our radio station, and he wondered when it was going to come back on the air. So, you know, not only do you not know whose lives you're touching as far as uh, just, you know, the regular folks out there, it's an amazing, you know, number of the bureaucrats themselves and the government agents who are, who are listening and paying attention, and that can't be uh, a bad thing. So do we have any other questions at this moment? All the way in the back. You might want to mention the jail guards also uh, watch. The jail guards, I mean, all kinds of people watch what we're doing. No, I, I'd like to address uh, the question that was, has been on the floor for a while, is people come up and say, well, I really like what you're doing, but your methods are wrong, okay? And I think there, there, there can be a really good way of, of, of handling that, you know? Uh, first of all, they're giving you agreement. So my, my idea is to sell it to them. What is it about it, our, 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 what is it about our goals that you really like? Okay, because they've said, well, I like your ideas, or I, li I like what you're trying to do. Okay, what is it about? And really sell it to them. You know, find out how much agreement there is and really cement that. And then say, okay, what methods would you use to accomplish this goal? Where are they going to go? They might come up with something creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, that, that was all. That, I just wanted to bring that up because I hadn't heard anybody say that. Any comments on that? <laughs> yeah, and I'd say one thing, you know, some of the methods we use, you know, like if we're going out chalking, I mean, that's just like a, a cheap, easy way to get your message out, whatever it is, right? Like people will, will look at it and they'll read it and, you know, they'll think about it, whatever you're chalking. And it's um, it's because we don't, you know, necessarily we don't have a platform to reach uh, a huge number of people. Like, like if you chalk something... Like let's say in front of the courthouse or whatever, like don't take the plea or whatever. Um, you, you're reaching people, and it's like a lower cost way of like holding a sign or whatever. Um, and it's because we sometimes you don't have a platform. We obviously have a lot of tools we can use. Like there's a local access television show called Cheshire TV. A lot of activists in Keene produce shows and they put them on there. Um, there's some great. There's a, a a guy that just moved to Keene last year. He's been writing. There's a couple people that write letters to the editor, which I think is huge because there's a lot of people, frankly, that they, they won't go online, they won't watch television, and the newspaper is still their, their medium of getting information. I, I really appreciate the people that, that do those kind of things. And I, I mean, it, it is very difficult to, to reach everyone, and you know, it's just like you've got to keep, keep going, and like Garrett's real big into talking, and I love it, and you know. Do, do we have any more questions? I should give a brief comment on that. Um, yeah, I should clarify a lot of the people that say, like, oh, I agree with like 80 or 90 percent of what you guys do. It really comes down to, well, I, I like the Second Amendment, and I think we should get back to a constitutional republic. But other than that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, oh, um, to the gentleman's point, uh, you, you, I like your your ideology, but not your methods. Um, and then they, they suggest a method that's, well, they've been doing that for 200 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't see any impact. I'm, I'm not going uh, can, to, I can read history. You know, I'm not going to spin my wheels and, and do something that I know is not going to have a result. That was my point. It, yeah, and I think, I think it was a great point to bring up. I mean, the, you know, let's just take, um, if you look at, like, abolition, or the Civil Rights Movement. I mean, there were abolitionists at the, the founding, you know, in the 1700s of America, and, the, you know, the issue, it didn't get any traction for so long. And so, like, to me, the, the tried and true methods of, like, okay, writing newspaper articles, writing books, talking to people, that stuff takes a long time. And, you know, I want to do, I want to spend my resources on things that, that are quicker. And, you know, I, I think it's great that people write books and, like I said, newspaper articles, but 
I don't I don't see the results from a lot of those activities where I know if I go out Robin Hood, you know, it's immediate results. I, I see it right there. And it, it's more satisfying to me. I, I know I'm making a difference. I know I saved 60 people today. You know, it, like it feels good, but are there any other questions? I, I want to make a comment about um, Paul's point. Uh, a lot of the activism methods that people disagree with happen to be things that happen on the spur of the moment that you weren't really planning for. Um, and it's, those instances also tend to be some of my favorite, the, the most impactful. One that comes to mind is James uh, sitting on his chalking in front of the courthouse. Um, he had drew, drawn a picture of Robin Hood. The city agents decided to wipe it away with a hose, and he decided to sit on his um, drawings to preserve it so that, you know, they're not going to oppose me, right? But they did. <laughs> and uh, people would say, well, you know, why would you do that? Or why would you, you know, you're, you're making a scene or I don't agree with that method, right? But it's not like he says, oh, I, I go out every day and I sit on chalking. You know, it, it comes from a place of like, I have to do something in this moment. And it has, you know, I don't know what, you know, I'm going to do something right now. And it's not always planned. But I think a lot of the criticism comes from, instances like that, and not so much like the daily Robin Hooding. And I think a lot of people's uncomfortability, I'll continue in a moment, I think a lot of people's uncomfortability from a situation like that is that it's, it forces them to address it, right? Because they don't want to, you don't want to see somebody get hosed down, uh, you don't want to see uh, a situation like that, and, and it, it forces people to, to look at that and come up with an opinion about it and you know they would rather not you know they would rather not have been challenged with that video they'd rather not have been challenged with knowing that their their government agents the ones that they you know have been told we're the government and you elected us and you know all these uh cliched sort of excuses they don't want to believe that their neighbors in a lot of cases these are people they might know as well you know talk, talk about Keene being a small town when some bureaucrat misbehaves a lot of the people who feel uncomfortable about that probably know who that person is. They might go to church with him or her. They might have some sort of a, you know, a social group interaction with that person. They may be their friends uh, in, for whatever reason. These people know one another. And so to see someone they know behaving, like, oh, well, George the janitor sprayed down that, that boy with a, a hose? Well, he must have done something to deserve that. My friend wouldn't do anything bad like that. So who knows what internal conversations people are having and that they're, they're forced to have by this direct action. And in a lot of cases, we're talking about you know, non-cooperation, basically. It wasn't civil disobedience. You just were, were kind of obstructing what they were, were trying to do. Um, so let's, let's go on here. We started the panel discussion on ticketing, and sometimes we do get tickets. Right now, I have a case on appeal before the New Hampshire Supreme Court. I, I committed the victimless crime of forgetting to have my vehicle inspected. Uh, what you want to do is you don't even want to take this to court. You want to stop it at the court. In order for a case, for a judge to uh, hear a case, the judge has to have jurisdiction. And yes, I lived in a town, I lived in the state of New Hampshire, but my question to the prosecutor during discovery was, what evidence do you have that the Constitution and the codes are applicable to me? If there is no evidence, there's no jurisdiction. There will not be a court case. The prosecutor said to me on discovery on the phone, well, there, I have no evidence that the Constitution and the codes are, are applicable to you. I tried to bring this up in court during the, at, uh, at the hearing, that uh, there is no jurisdiction because you have, you have no evidence that the codes are applicable to me. And um, because the judge assumed jurisdiction without having jurisdiction it's now on appeal to the New Hampshire Supreme Court so you can that's something that everybody here needs to question them because there is no evidence that the codes are applicable to any of us you know they'll bring up um, um, 
the, the, the uh, social contract. And a contract is where somebody does one thing and somebody else does another thing for them. Uh, we have contracted originally to give up some of our rights to get protection of our life and property from the state. 156 years ago, the Supreme Court said the state owes you no uh, protection. protection. So they have canceled the contract. There, there is now no evidence that the Constitution and the codes are applicable. Remember that. I've actually asked that question in court, so I, I support that approach of uh, questioning just the, the fundamentals of the system. And you know, if I sign a contract, I'd really like to see it. So can you provide that? And I'm interested to know, uh, Dan, Dan is it? Yeah. Uh, what what happens? Uh, there's because I've I've asked that question in court, and of course I've lost, as, as you did as well at the district court level. Um, but I I don't like to give money to the state, so I've never appealed it. So I'm glad that uh, that you have appealed on this. And when you get a result. If you could email that to news at freekeen.com, that goes out to multiple recipients at Freekeen, and we're going to get that information. I want to publicize that. I want to find out what the Supreme Court says. Oh, yeah, I want it to be publicized. So please, news yes. at freekeen.com, reach out to us uh, on that. I'd like to say, too, uh, I appreciate Dan, you, you know, you're doing it, stepping up to the plate. I mean, you, uh, one of the things I think about direct action, I mean, you don't have to, like, commit your life to this. You can... You don't have to. You just just start somewhere. You know. You don't have to go out and uh, film a police officer. And you know. You don't have to go to the max immediately. Like I, I feel like you should. Uh, like like baby steps. I mean, just start doing whatever you want to do. Hold a sign, and it, you you get better and better and better at things. It's like anything in life. Um, the more you do it, the better you get. And I I don't think anyone should be discouraged. Uh, take a parking ticket to trial. I mean. You just start with anything small, and if, if one of your goals is to uh, be a direct action activist and you know be uh, maybe sitting on this panel or whatever, being uh, kind of living the life, if you will, I mean you got to start somewhere, and, and you can do just so many little things. You could, as the one gentleman said, you could just go around and fill the meters, and not tell anyone, or put some cards out, or. I don't think anyone should be discouraged, and everyone, whatever you do, just start somewhere, I guess is my, my little motivating speech here at the end. <laughs> so, you guys have recorded a lot of stuff. You've had cameras knocked around, uh, you've had cameras taken. Uh, what would you recommend for actually carrying and using? Uh, do you guys have a particular brand of camera that you like, or a type of camera? Like, so if you want something small that you can carry, you can use. What are your recommendations on that? Oh, Canon like Vixia, right? Am I right? So there are times on the Vixia. Are I've been using Canon Vixias, Vixias as well. Sony Handycam and <coughs> Canon Vixias are the most popular. Can we get that on mic, though, please? Yeah. Sony Handycams and Canon Vixias have been have become the the activism standard, I think, yeah. They're cheap enough, and if they get stolen, you don't cry, and the replacement parts, other people have them. They're great uh, tools. I would say, too, I mean, uh, I started off with a flip video camera, just a real cheap one. That That is a cheap way to do it. It works pretty well. One of the issues I had was, like, I was holding it, and the, like someone knocked it out of my hands onto the ground. And something like this, you can get a little bit better hold, It'll have better. This is a, a Sony Handycam. It's like a $200 camera. You probably can find it on eBay for even less. It shoots HD. The audio is great. As Garrett was pointing out, the the startup time is phenomenal. Like you open the the screen and you know, okay, it's on. You know, it's ready to go. So I mean, I like Garrett and I both use Handycams now. And you know, Garrett has like a few little tools. Maybe he can show you. He has like a, a little grip there. Uh, for stabilization, there's some things you can do to further improve um, your tools. You want to comment on that? Sure. Uh, one of the things, I, if I'm out doing Robin Hooding, I'm probably carrying that contraption called the X Grip. It's a U shaped design. That makes things so much more convenient. You can be filming behind yourself by just holding it in front of you and looking at the screen, or you can be filming like over your shoulder. You can mount it on your shoulder. 
Um, so that device I'd highly recommend, 20 bucks on Amazon for an X grip. You can put it in your belt so you can conveniently carry the camera. Um, about the different types of cameras, I started off with a Vixia uh, from Canon. They run about 300 bucks on the lower end. Um, they're great, very high quality image, very high quality mic. Um, not that great in low light. The cheaper Sony Handycam that James was mentioning, very good in low light. If you're going to be shooting at night, if you're doing uh, police accountability stuff in low light, that's what you want is the Sony Handycam or other uh, cameras that have good low light quality. And the startup, startup time is really important because if you're in a situation where you need to film, um, you probably should have already been filming by the time you realize that you should be filming. So the less seconds it takes to hit record is, is very vital. And for that reason, uh, I carry the Sony with me if I'm generally out. Also over there, you'll see a, a Nikon Coolpix. It's a $300 DSLR camera. It also takes a very high quality image. Microphones, all right. Um, not that great in low light. So yeah, this, what's the name of the low light thing on the Sony's? Um, it's, like, ISO. It, it's called the Exmor sensor. It's kind of like a, a sensor that, it kind of plays with the camera settings a little bit. Like I think it lowers the FPS a bit, so more light comes in each frame. You know, it has other, uh, software, whatever the chip does, it, it just makes everything look a little bit brighter, if you will. One thing I'd like to say too, um, one thing you can do, like, uh, if you're out in public, you can always be audio recording, and then, like, okay, so I'm 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 audio I'm audioing right, and then uh, that could that could be the like if someone comes up to you and says something or whatever is hostile, you're, you're starting with the camera. Okay, you have a record of it. That's what Ridley does. I highly recommend it. Another tool that's a good thing to have is just like a two-way radio. Uh, I think Ian, do you have any more for sale? Oh, six of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're out, especially with the group, like like I love I love cell phones. They're great, but if we're kind of dispersed over an area, let, let's say all of us are out doing something, we're covering an event or whatever. Um, with the radio, it's instant communications, and it's to everyone. A cell phone, I have to like dial or I'd be trying to like text one person. It's just not necessarily the right tool for the job. So I highly recommend the radio. It's something that you're, you know, interested in. That's another point. Depending on the activity, the more if you can have a partner or the more people, the better. You'll be more effective. I mean, let's face it. Five people holding signs looks better than one. I mean, at the end of the day, people, they will, if you're just a one guy holding the sign, which was like me in Georgia, let's say, uh, the one guy holding the Ron Paul sign, you know, it's just like people are going to marginalize you, so. Oh, there's two minutes for the next panel. Yeah, I know, about to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody uh, for coming here and staying extra. Uh, Panel, who's taking the time out this morning? And got up, everyone got up early. Thanks for coming out. And, uh, and if you have further questions, just stop us. I mean, we're all going to be here all day long, and, uh, and feel free to ask more if you've got them. Thanks. Hey, thank Ian, you. Could you guys all get together sure. and get a picture of all of you? <coughs> Stand there. Or maybe Ian, you get them. Yeah. If you get yeah. Oh. Um, let's see. They right, gotta like go. be doing the puppet mess. <laughs> <laughs> right, ready? One, <coughs> two, three. Thank you. <laughs> Has been the face and a voice of the We'd DPRK like to invite you to visit freekeen.com.